It's time to enter the world of real estate with Hawaii's only true real estate show, the Team Lolly Real Estate Show. Grab a pen and get ready to take notes. Hawaii's premier real estate leaders, Adrian Lolly and Attilio Leonardi, will bring you the latest in real estate news and real world strategies on how they can guarantee to sell your home at a price and deadline you agree to, or they'll buy it. Now, here are your hosts, Adrian and Attilio. Welcome to the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the Guaranteed Sold Program, or we'll buy it. If you have any real estate questions, you can reach us at 633-8633, that's 633-8633, or check us out at teamlally.com, and that's L-A-L-L-Y. Well, hey, everybody. This is Attilio. I was uh, character spotting. Uh, this is something we do when we when we're when we are driving around Maui. We spot the different <laughs> characters. So today in Paia we had uh, I call him PVC cross pipe man. He had this big big cross made out of PVC pipe that he was carrying on his shoulders and waving to people. And as I was looking at him, this lady tapped me on the shoulder and started asking me a bunch of tax legal questions. And I said, "Those are great questions. Highly recommend you seek the appropriate licensed professional." And then I said, "But mom." What other questions do you have? So if you hear anything on the show, sounds like legal advice. Adrian, who should they run that by? They should run it by the attorneys with hearts, Kane and Heron right mm -hmm. here in Wailuku. Anything that sounds like tax advice, hey, run it past your CPA. By the way, if you are a tax professional and you'd like to tap into our huge client base, become a sponsor of our show. Give us a call at what number, Adrian? They can call us at 633 86 Three, three. All right. You got some quotes? I have some quotes, and then uh, we'll be bringing on David Kane for his uh, legal tip of the week. Mm -hmm. All right. So these quotes are about compassion, and we're tying them into a guest that we're going to be having on our show mm -hmm. later on in the day. Yes. Talking about his actions of compassion. All right. So this quote is from Ellen DeGeneres. Here are the values that I stand for. Honesty equality, kindness, compassion, treating people the way that you want to be treated and helping those in need. To me, those are traditional values. Well, I don't know. I think that you treat people the way that they want to be treated. Yes. Not the way you wanted to be treated because that's not always the same. What if they're mean people? So you treat them mean? <laughs> no, no. Like what if you like to be if so, if you like to be treated in a mean way, then you should treat them in a mean way also. I get that. No, okay. no that's not what that means. What's the other quotes? More All right. Quotes? This is from Albert Schweitzer. The purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help others. That is a good stuff. And the last one is from Lao Tzu. Su. Su. Okay. I have just three things to teach. Simplicity. Patience compassion these three are your greatest treasures yes and we pause so you can reflect that was so deep yes pause for emphasis all right speaking of deep conversations we have david kane on the line from mm -hmm. kane and heron the attorneys with hearts hey guys i feel like i'm on a zen retreat i know <laughs> people are <laughs> pulling their cars over i need to i need to concentrate on what they're saying here i can't drive and listen at the same time there you go exactly <laughs> well this this week do you want me to just plow into into the uh, legal moment here yes okay well this week guys we're, we're talking about a couple actually real estate slash legal terms and and kind of what they mean a right of first refusal and an option to purchase. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a right of first refusal is where, uh, the let's say, the owner of a property will give somebody in writing a right to essentially buy the property, you, you know, usually like next door neighbors or something like that. Um, uh, or if they don't want to buy the property, then it can go on the market. There's some different ways we can craft the right of first refusal or an option to purchase. A lot of times an option to purchase is used in real estate where one of the parties agrees to improve the property for a certain price in the future, then that other pro party may have an option to purchase, or it could even be a, a long-term sale. We've, we've used those before. Um, those do have to be in writing, though, guys. Uh, it's If they are not, they are invalid. Mm -hmm. So... Um, 
uh, and and uh, kind of quickly, uh, a lot of times with those, you'll see leases or lease back um, to maybe a previous uh, owner or something like that. But but a lot of times they'll involve a lease, and in fact, sometimes in the lease itself, you can have an option of purchase, mm-hmm. which is legal as long as it's in writing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will tell you this, a uh, lot of pitfalls involved in these documents and, in particular, leases. Um, leases are the number one litigated um, item in my office. Wow. So that's, that, it, that tells you guys something. I mean, we have either it's an eviction or... You know, and and you could represent either side there, or it's the interpretation of leases, or it's the renegotiation of a lease. But as far as litigation is concerned, and what I mean by that is going before the judge, mm-hmm. uh, definitely leases are number one, and that's that's pretty much the number one thing that I do both in circuit and district court. So with these uh, with these lease options, does Kane and Heron like do you guys have like a a boilerplate template that's that's fair and that, that seems to stand up in court? We do, we do. And in fact, a lot of times what we'll do, guys, is we will use the standard uh, uh, real estate forms that, you know, you guys use a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the standard real estate forms and adapt or modify them with addendums. Okay. And that that works really well. We've, uh, we've done that a lot. Actually, one's in litigation now that I've done. So, I mean... Yeah. It, it's I, we can't say uh, as lawyers, hey, you're not going to go to court on this later on. Uh, but uh, you know, as long as you tell people up front, hey, this is the deal. These are this is how it works. Um, you know, come in and and we'll talk about it. But yeah, uh, a lot of times we'll we'll draft those and have language that we like to use in them. But like I said, it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to wind up in court later. So the, so the one that you're in court with, um, so obviously you wrote the lease with the purchase to, the option to purchase for the owner of the home, or was it for the tenant? Was it just a basic lease? It, it was, but yeah. I, I represented essentially a person who was going in to purchase okay. a part mm-hmm. of the property, and part of the deal was that they wanted, a, the, the, the seller wanted a lease back with an option to purchase at the end mm-hmm. and they the the agreement would have been to subdivide um it, uh the parcel mm-hmm. which we you know as part of our due diligence up front we we found out that 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 could be done as long as certain improvements were made so up front it sounded like a great deal for everybody mm-hmm. but unfortunately there was then the the lessor uh, conducted some illegal activity on the property, so guess what? You know, we had to come in and try to evict and <sighs> try to, you know, see if the option was still good. And it just, they're, they're really messy. They're, they're really messy. So I, I guess, too, you know, unless you're a wheeler dealer, you got to be careful with these documents as yeah. well, I think. And then also always come in and get advice. Like, you guys have, um, I really like that, how that the first phone consultation. call, the first consultation is you know at no charge you yeah, just gotta but, assess yeah, the situation yeah it, pretty much we, we can't do that for every case because mm-hmm. uh you know a lot of times people will attorney shop they'll have been to previous attorneys for for divorce or for mm-hmm. something like that but we can do it for certain cases what we like to do what cases we like to do the free uh, consultation for are financial cases or a lot of times wills where people aren't real familiar with these documents and we want to sit down and explain it to them mm-hmm. you know i'm not going to give a free consultation to the guy that owns the mall i'm sorry yeah. i'm not going to do it <laughs> yeah you know even good if luck he, to you <laughs> you gotta pay even if he brought a box of manapua gotta he, pay he would have to bring me 25 boxes bring the whole <laughs> truck well you know a lot of times people don't you know adrian and i you know as a licensed realtors we can do property management tomorrow if we wanted to uh, but we don't touch it with a 50-foot pole for exactly what you just said. Um, you a know, lot of litigation. A lot of litigation, a lot There's of risk a lot, management. Guys. You yeah. bet. You <laughs> bet there is. Yeah, so we brought somebody in separate to do that. But, you know, the the landlord, I don't know if it's in the landlord code, but they said that, you know, talk to you, talk to the to the listeners about this 
treble damages. When I hear the word treble, I think of those little furry creatures that overtook the Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> but I don't think that's what it means. I thought it's triple damages. Well, treble damages, and, and it, it is actually uh, treble, T-R-E-B-L-E, and it essentially treble. means damages that are over and above uh, kind of standard damage. So mm-hmm. it, it can, it's, it's usually up to a court, with, well, depending, it's up to a court if you're in, like, district court, say, if you're before a jury in circuit court, it could be up to the, to the circuit court uh, jurors to, to come to, you know, what type of damages are in, mm-hmm. imposed here. But uh, basically, uh, uh, and the reason for that, guys, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. It's a great question because the reason why they do that reason why the law does that is because typically in a contract, a lease is a contract. It just involves real estate, usually. Mm -hmm. Um, Could involve other pieces of property. It just involves property. But it's a contract. And in contract law, one of the old-timey contract laws was we don't have punitive damages. We don't have punishment damages when someone breaches a contract. Mm -hmm. It happens every day. It's business. Mm -hmm. We don't want to punish people for it. But treble damages are punishment. So when a landlord does a big no-no, it might be a lockout, it might be saving your security deposit over a a certain amount of time or whatever, there's a lot of rules. If you don't follow them, you get punished. Yeah. That's a great explanation. So for you, (laughs) for you, we call them furbos (laughs) for rent by owner. (laughs) Yeah. Right. You it's, might want to get. You might want to hire a professional property manager. I, I highly <laughs> advise it. And you guys, yeah, you guys see it a lot. I'm sure you know with the people who want to stay or lease property, mm-hmm. but still want to sell. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's messy. It's yep. messy. So. All right. So if any of our listeners need some legal advice or some lease reviews, lease reviews, uh, lease options, definitely give these guys a call. Kane and Heron. What's the good number? Two four two, ninety three fifty. All right. You can also check them out at caneandheron dot com. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct, guys. We love you as usual. You know, keep up your good work. I uh, about a week and a half ago, a client came to me and said that he was using you guys and and just could not be happier. Oh, great! Thank you so much. All right, thanks so much, David. Okay, keep up right. the good work. All Take right, care. you too. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take a a quick break. Mm hmm. And when we come back, we have a very special guest that will be joining with us. Yes, we have the Dalai Lama. Someone that will uh, change your life forever. Yes. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Maui Mortgage Minute, brought to you by Ginny Madsen of the Maui Mortgage Team. Aloha. A question that we often get is, how is it possible that you have such great mortgage products and rates? It's important to us to offer our clients the very best. And that's why we joined Pacific Home Loans, one of the top mortgage companies in Hawaii. Pacific Home Loans sends hundreds of millions of dollars in mortgage business to Hawaii's largest banks and trust companies every year. With this volume, we get access to hundreds of mortgage products and the lowest rates. Backed by the best mortgage company in Hawaii, supported by the top loan processors and underwriting team, we make getting a mortgage easy. We look forward to serving you. Visit MauiMortgageTeam.com for all of your mortgage needs. Again, that's www.MauiMortgageTeam.com. NMLS 1078414. Now, you may have thought to own a home here on Maui, you must be made of gold. We are happy to say this is not the case. Oh yeah, Celio? Why don't I have to be made of gold to own a home here on Maui? Well, it's because of the Maui Mortgage Team. Really? Tell me more. You've got my attention. Well, Jenny Madsen, host of the acclaimed Maui Mortgage Minute, educates people every day about the ins and outs of home financing. Check out their website, MauiMortgageTeam.com, for mortgage calculators, streaming videos, online home buyer guides, secure file transfer technology, and more. Sounds like the Maui Mortgage Team is the highest tech mortgage group on the island. Hey, you know that Maui can be expensive. 
The Maui Mortgage Team love helping people save money and make their dreams of home ownership come true. There are never any hidden fees or surprises, and they will always advise you on getting the best deal. Whether you're at the grocery store, getting gas, or booking a trip, you shop around for the best deal. We believe getting a mortgage should be no different. So check out the Maui Mortgage Team.com or call them at 270-2775. Hawaii NMLS ID number 1032554. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Hawaii, I would hire Adrian Lolly and Antilio Leonardi. Their marketing strategy is so effective that if your home doesn't sell on terms you agree to, Team Lolly will buy it. Partner with the team I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. When you're trying to find the best of the best Don't settle for an agent that's just like the rest Pick a team that knows just what to do From buying or selling, we work hard for you Team Lolly, the best real estate in the islands 227-2703 you know, you have every right to be spooked when thinking about dealing with real estate. And I have a unique proposition for you. It's from Adrian Lally and Attilio Leonardi of Team Lally. What they do is offer a no-obligation guarantee. If they haven't done their job, you're free to get out of the contract. But don't worry, you won't want to because Adrian and Attilio will sit down with you. Establish a price and a deadline to sell your home. And if that deadline passes and your home isn't sold, they'll buy your home. Check out the success story. Imagine the disappointment when one family listed with another agent and waited while their house sat unsold for 90 days. Days. Well, they decided to call Adrian and Attilio, and they weren't disappointed. The home sold in only three days, plus Team Lally got $460,000 for the property, which was over $20,000 of the asking price. So call the only agents willing to earn your business every single day. That's Attilio Leonardi, Adrian Lally, and her team. And that number is 633-8633. Again, 633-8633. You can also find them online at GuaranteedSale.com. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Welcome back. This is Adrian. And this is Atilio. And you're listening to the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the Guaranteed Sold Program, or we'll buy it. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions, oh, we have any questions. Do you I have any questions? You cut me off. Cutting you off. Do not cut me off. If you have any questions, you can call us. And What's, whatever you do. What is that number, Atilio? I don't know. What is what it? What is that number? Where I can't read. It's oh, six three three eight six. I don't even know our own number. Well, read it. It's right there. Six three three eight six three three. Or on the web at teamlally.com. That's L A L L Y. Hey, you know, before the break, I said we we're gonna have the Dalai Lama on the show. Yes. What I meant was the Dalai. We're gonna have a quote from Dalai Lama. Oh. And I may be misquoting him, but it's a good quote anyway. Be the change in the world. Speaking of being the change in the world. We have Sheen Jeremy James. He's the founder of Empowering Nations mm -hmm. and also a recent, a recent movement that's sweeping the nation, Actions of Compassion. Are you there, Shane? I'm here. How are you guys doing today? Always we're, great. We're doing great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. All right. So, so tell us more about yourself, your background, and... and um, this Actions of Compassion. Yes, we want to know more. Tell me more. So where do we start here? Well, tell us about you. You know, Hawaii, Hawaii, people in Hawaii, it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. They want to know who you are before they know what your message is. So, so help us with that. Tell us who you are. Of course, of course. Well, I love Hawaii, too, because you know, you know I've been there. I've been on TV there many mm -hmm. times. I've done seminars there. I have to say there's one thing about Hawaii. All the people have treated me fantastic. Great. So, <laughs> yes, I love it. Uh, a bit about my, my kind of past and, and background and everything. I, I've been an uh, entrepreneur since I've been, since I've been young, since I've been 19 to 21 type thing, started in business, haven't worked for anybody since I've been pretty much about 23 years old. I've always had that entrepreneur spark to build things, create things, start things, um, and, and always been very successful in a lot of the businesses that I've been in. One of the ones that I really became known for was the Curves for Women franchises. I brought those to Canada. That's where I got my kind of real big start. And from there, I kept on building different locations. And I started writing books with inside the fitness industries, some that became bestsellers. 
And uh, from there, I started working with lots of other businesses and building on a few more different businesses of my own. And as I was, um, you know, kept working with more businesses, more businesses started to come and ask me to uh, help them in different areas. And uh, so my company, Empowering Nations, was born, and there was two divisions to the company. There was the one division of helping business people market their business uh, online. Uh, I really entered the digital marketing space. Uh, knew that that's where the entire future of business was going, even though 10 years ago when people were fighting me and saying that I, I can't see that, I don't think people are going to sit on these platforms, I don't think customers will ever just go on the internet and buy, I don't think that will ever happen. And I kept trying to tell people that it's going to completely change, and hence I learned it and studied it and learned it and built it in all my businesses, and hence why I've been able to really build a business ar across the world so fast using a digital technology and now our company helps businesses all over the world create uh, digital marketing plans and, and give content strategies and and help create those types of plans that was one side of our company and then the other side is is um, one of my true passions and that is uh, helping people I love to help people I've been in helping people my entire life and hence actions of compassion was born I wanted a way to give back to change the world and I felt that there was not enough kindness and there was not enough peace and, and love and people working together. There was too much of a divide in all humanity. And so, and, and we almost get into this thing where we walk by somebody and we see them in need or we, or we forget about helping our fellow human mankind or just doing little things that could make somebody's day better. And often it becomes a trend or it becomes a challenge, but it doesn't become a, behave, a behavioral change. Mm -hmm. And that was literally my goal was to create a movement that created behavior changes with inside people. And that's the only way that you can actually create a really big movement because people have got to take action. Uh, I always say I can stand up and talk and teach and do seminars all over the world. All over the world. But the fact is for people to create true, true change and us to create true change across the world, people have to act on a daily basis to change that behavior. Mm -hmm. And I always say I don't... Does, with what we're doing, actions and compassion, it does not matter what religion you are, how much money you have, what race you are, what your background is, everybody is in this for one reason, to create more kindness and more compassion and more peace, and more peace throughout the world. So how could, um, how could our listeners or ourselves, how can we join this actions of your, compassion? Your, your website talks about practical tools. What are yes. these practical tools? Yeah, so first one, they can go over to www.empoweringnations.com and they'll mm -hmm. see a thing that says World Empowerment, Actions of Compassion. They can join there. And then also what we have done is something a little different, too, because we've combined a lot of my training uh, to help people become better leaders, to manage their time, to be better with their money, to have more control of their emotions, to be more productive. And we'll give, this, give them this training along the way, actually for free, that training, uh, hence, they go out and do one actions of compassion per day. Because really, I knew that if we create more success in people, more positive people, more happy people, and we help them, then it's easier for them to go out and help other people too. So that was a big thing, a big part of our program as well. Now, I noticed that um, that you get a list of small, medium, and large compassionate acts. Could you tell us more about these um, these different types? Yeah, you know that was a big thing of actually creating the program. Because often we always think if somebody goes out, goes out and does a bigger act, it's, it's, it's more rewarded. And that I didn't want to get into. I didn't want to have a separation you know, between anything. So that was somebody went out and volunteered at a nonprofit. Well, yeah, it takes more time and some more commitment and stuff. But what happens if you know, one of the, you know, there's a lady at home and one that I know that does Actions of Compassion now. And she has you know, many kids and... She doesn't, she can't, she's a single mom. She can't go volunteer somewhere, mm -hmm. but she wanted to be part of it. So why would we kind of separate a big act from a small act? Because it's all the same. It's still kindness and compassion. So a small act could be as a stranger walks by and you give them a compliment. Normally mm -hmm. we just don't do that. We don't yeah. talk to strange people mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, I know. And, you know, and bigger acts could be, you know, going to volunteer and doing that type of stuff, helping somebody, you know, on the street to going to read to kids at your local church. There's so many different actions of compassion. And I've actually brought in a community from all over the world already. We have, I think, 
13, 14 different countries now, and they're just coming in like crazy. Uh, we, we're going to be having celebrities are getting involved. We're going to be interviewing them, and they're going to be doing actions of compassion as well, too. And we have book series coming out that everybody can be featured in. So mm -hmm. if anybody does an actions of compassion, uh, they're welcome to send in their story to us, and I'll be featuring in my book series everybody else's actions of compassion. You know, one of my favorite acts of compassion is I, you know, if I'm driving along and I see somebody that wants to cross in the crosswalk, I'll stop, I'll tell them go, and then I gun the engine a little <laughs> bit, and they'll stop, and I'll say, no, 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 seriously, go. And then they'll start walking again, and then I'll gun the engine. No, no, no. He doesn't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, one of the ones that I like doing is when you're, everybody's in a rush to park is if I see somebody that wants the parking stall and we're facing each other, I tell them, go, take, go ahead, it. take the parking stall. You should be taking the one that's further away anyways. It's better for, you know, But then I gun it, and then they don't get, and then I say, go, take the park, and then I gun, <laughs> no, no, no. I let them take the parking stall. And people, you know, maybe that was, I'm in my head, I'm thinking maybe that person was stressed out for the day, and that mm -hmm. was that one act that got them to kind of calm down and just relax and have a better view of the world. Yeah, that's so true. So, you know, it's just simple. all that little stuff like that. And we don't, we don't recognize it. The truth yeah. is, if you really go back to human behavior, mm -hmm. and when we really break it down, human behavior, most of the times people don't have results in life and get ahead where they want to go. It's because we do the same behavior every day. And that's in everything from business mm -hmm. to, uh, to having better relationships to everything. And we don't actually ever pick up on it. We go to work. We go the same way, we drive the same way, we do the same thing. And then usually on the weekend, we actually think, okay, we're going to go do something different. But actually, when you break it down, we actually don't do that much different on the weekend mm -hmm. either. And then all of a sudden, we that's when we get this big idea that we got to like go bungee jump or something to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. And then we go back into our own old patterns, hence why we can't stay and do actions of compassion and help humanity in that, because we go right back into our daily, our daily lives caught up into you know doing the same thing all the time like mm -hmm. that and if we got into the into the thing of giving someone a compliment helping somebody with their groceries going to volunteer every saturday if we got into that pattern the whole world will literally change because it becomes literally uh, a be it becomes a behavioral change and there's actually a thing that happens within people too when we do something good for other people anything even an animal or something it actually builds our confidence and builds our self-esteem. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Mm -hmm. So, so Shane, you were mentioning your your book series. Now, I was I was watching a, a video that you had, and you talked about you had a, a children's book series, and then one for adults. Could you give us more details about that? Yeah, as the concept started to evolve, and and it's it's evolved. I can say nothing like I've seen evolve so fast in my life of all the business stuff I've done. And we just had people come in from all over the world wanting to help on all different levels. And as it evolved, I was going to do the book series for uh, people sending in their stories. And that, as that evolved, some kids started coming in and wanting to do actions of compassion. And at that point, I knew right then that we've got to create a kid's book series as well, too, with characters in it. And that will probably actually be more of the real change, because if the kids start doing it, then the adults have to do it. And sometimes it's harder to change adults' behavior. So why not get the kids when we're young? Because they're the next generation as well, too. So, I mean, if some of the adults get so stuck in their ways, you know, you can work with them for five years, and you, you still can't budge them, right? <laughs> so, so we often... You know, so I'm just kind of having some fun there, by the way, too. So, and often, you know, if you hit that younger generation and they start to see that and start to do it, it can create a real momentum across the world. And we do have quite a few different types of kids and, and different age groups and stuff doing it already. And then we could truly start to push back against some of the bullying and stuff like that, not by so much as speaking all the time in words. But if you have big groups doing actions of compassion, those stronger groups will push back against the type of bullying and different stuff without even having to say too much. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how, how soon do you expect these books to be out? Uh, the first series of the Actions of Compassion book for uh, people sending in their stories mm -hmm. will be launched pretty much in the next uh, three months. We'll be going, we've got stories coming in, and they'll just keep going and going and going. And the children's books, I would say we're going to probably be about uh, five, four and a half months away from that when I got somebody started on that now and, and creating that so is there still time to send in stories to make the book or is it already yes, set yes 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 all right <laughs> so, uh, anybody listening right now send in any actions of compassion you're doing and 
and uh, yeah, and you can make that first book. And, and even if it didn't get right into that first book, we need stories for the second book, too, mm-hmm. because we're going to be doing them pretty much one after another. It's not going to be one book and then wait a year. Remember, I wrote four books in two years by myself. So mm-hmm. just think what I'm going to do with this series. Yes. Now, you also mentioned that you have, uh, I mean, you're appearing on our radio show, but you guys have a, a regular radio show that you, you talk about these actions of compassion on? Yeah, we're, we're, we've started on a, actually a few different spots. Um, we've started on now. We just started on a starting on a starting on a Detroit radio in about two and a half weeks. That we'll have regular spots on there, and um, a few other different different places too that we're we're, we're talking with as well now too. So um, that's kind of just evolved on its own as well too. So that, which is really cool because it's kind of showing how many people are really supporting us in what we're doing and and helping us get the word out, like you guys, you know, helping mm-hmm. spread the movement. And that, that's the key, you know, nothing great is ever built from, say, just me having an idea. Stuff that's built, that's, that greatness is built across the world comes from a dedicated group of people helping spread the word to, to make a move, to create a movement. Well, I think that's great that you're, you're starting in Detroit because we know the kind of crime rates that are, are happening there. One of our, um, we have a, it's, a potential team member and we yeah, can, wants to move yeah and like she, her next door neighbor clients all sorts of people that she knows well have, have been, been harmed terminally murdered you know it's just i wanted to make it nice with you wow. saying, but yeah, anyway that's so, the reality of of the place she lives in and it's unfortunate but uh um you know i like what you said on a daily basis you know people I did a lot with boy scouts and their motto is do a good turn daily and mm-hmm. then you have the Eagle Scouts with the Eagle Project. Not, everybody doesn't have to go out there and do an Eagle Project, which lo- takes a lot of time and effort. But what you're saying is just do stuff on a daily basis. Um, I like that message. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let's let's round robin and come up with, you know. But, but what can Team Lally do on a daily basis? What can we do on a daily basis? Yes. We help people. Perfect. Yeah, so so what do you will. guys think? What, what, yeah, give, give me some examples. What, do you guys, what would you guys do on a daily basis? Well, let's see here. If somebody was turning on their turn signal, I would I would slow down and give them space so that they could come into my lane. That would be one. What else, Adrian? Your turn. <laughs> that, that would be good. You probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't yell at them, right? You're just not calling us that part, so we'll leave that out. Really? Like, <laughs> come on over. <laughs> come no, on, Adrian. I mean, I think I'm a pretty courteous driver, though, too. And yep. um, and I, I use my turn signals. You're saying back east don't use the turn signal because then they tighten it up the space. They do. But in Hawaii, use the turn signal. People I'm, spread out. And I'm a courteous driver here in Hawaii. And I let people in. And well, I, like I wave at them. But back east, it's a different story. But yeah. anyway, we need to be. We need to go back east and rent, rent the car and just let people in our lane like all yes, day long. And, let them take parking them. stalls. Show them how to drive with aloha. So, no, our motto is show them the aloha, not the finger. There you go. Show them yeah. aloha. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so Shane you also have uh, in the works a reality TV show as well tell us more about yeah. that mm-hmm. yeah we're in we're in um, a few different talks with different different television networks right now and different um, different spaces so it's because it's in negotiations right now and different things I kind of can't really talk too much sure. about that right now mm-hmm. but uh, there's going to be some really cool things happening with the actions of compassion on you know in the media in the media in the media area so yeah we're ex- really, really excited about that well if the reality tv show comes to hawaii you know who to call yeah 100 uh-huh. <laughs> percent, 100 percent. you got that right <laughs> all right so you also had mentioned that there's some some celebrities that you've uh that are, are part of the movement or, or taking a, an active an active role if it's not top secret can yeah. that be mentioned yeah tell us who yeah, we got a we got a few different ones coming on, and again, that's kind of uh, kind of on the low key right mm-hmm. now as we're kind of rolling things out, as we're uh, kind of doing things, because that's actually going to play into some of the actually behind the scenes TV stuff with us. Well, so we're going to be doing some type of uh, also social experiments of actions of compassion and mm-hmm. a little hint maybe of different cities, maybe some of the most compassionate, maybe some of the least compassionate in the mm-hmm. world. So you're yep. going to see a lot of different stuff happening. Yeah. You know, so part of the show, and when I'm starting today, and I, I always say I'm going to do it, I'm, this is my Oprah, Oprah Winfrey call out. We know <laughs> she owns property on Maui. She may be listening to the show, maybe somebody on her staff. So one, Oprah, we'd love to have you on the show. And it would be great if you could help us out with the acts with the actions of compassion. Actions of compassion. Get behind it because we know you're a big 
proponent for making some positive changes in the world. So in case Oprah is listening to our real estate show here on Maui, <laughs> there's your call out. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that's and that's where we're going with this. Because, you know, if you look at anything that's really, you know, some some concepts that have started uh, on on actions of compassion, but not actions of compassion. If you think back a while ago, there was remember the movie Pay It Forward. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Pay it forward. And pay it forward was a good movie, and, and people were doing it, and they still kind of do it. You know, sometimes someone will buy something for somebody in the line and, yep. and do that type of stuff. It, it kind of trickles here and there, but it's never been ingrained in society. It's been something that started and then stopped. It's never been something that has been an ongoing thing, an ongoing thing to pass down generations and generations to mm-hmm. come. And that's you know, and that's that's the goal for for us of what we're doing is a lot bigger vision. And just go out and do one thing. It's a, the fact that you know you only need a small, dedicated group of people to start a real movement that can go on and last an entire lifetime. So not a you know what not a one thing. And hence that's why we're doing the reality type stuff. That's why I'm doing all the books. That's why I'm doing you know certain you know the radio shows, clothing lines. You know that's why we're doing it all because then it becomes a big entity that can be keep going and you know can keep passing down generations now I, I, you know one thing the listeners got to be because you know, everybody's all cynical and jaded is that this is not about some money-making adventure because you are a business person you help a lot of companies improve their bottom line but you're you're this is your you are getting behind this because you want to give back and and do this in the world yeah i mean really really this is really what happened to me i'll be completely transparent i was sitting sitting one day and i i have raised you know, thousands and thousands of pounds of food in our cities. I've started Thanksgiving food drives and fed, you know, so many people that went on. And, and I've done all that stuff just by myself with ideas. And and they went big, a lot of them. And we were sitting here and I, I said, we've got a lot of powerful people in, 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 in our inner circles. And I felt we're not doing enough mm-hmm. to create a better world. We're doing business and we're all doing this. And yeah, I'm helping people, you know, change their lives in the business and yeah, I do some personal development personal growth and that type of stuff too but I said you know we're not doing enough and I said if I look back and people walked into my funeral they'd be a great guy motivated do anything for anybody but I want them to be able to walk in and say he had a big team that helped change the world they were compassionate they mm-hmm. helped people you know even inside my company you know we do actions of compassion to each other getting into even into corporations starting to work together as as employees and people becoming more compassionate to each other. And so that was really, you know, truthfully too, how it did start was, was that was one of the reasons that, that we've just got to do more and we can do more and people can do more. And so let's lead it and let's get it going. And let's, you know, I always say this is not my movement. This is, this is everybody else's. We just had, I just had the idea and I had a, a lot of people help me put it together and launch it. And, and you know, and create it, and believe in my vision, and see my vision, uh, and understand where you know where it is. And I'm excited about that because I feel right now that there's so many people involved that it it would never die. If, you know, something ever happened to me and I was gone tomorrow. There's so many people involved right now that are so passionate, just as much as me, about it that it would just keep going on and on and on. And so I feel excited about that because I feel we haven't even really gotten going yet. And, and we've already got it to a level that's amazing. Well, hey, everybody, if you're just tuning in, you are listening to Shane Jeremy James, founder of Empowering Nations and his recent movement sweeping the nation called Actions of Compassion. Adrian, you had a question? Yes. Yeah, so, Shane, with all these awesome stories coming in for the for the different books you're putting together and then also within your, your company, could you share with us one of your favorite ones or most unique actions of compassion that you've you've come across yeah i think uh, geez, those are good ones because there's just so many that people have done with inside our groups that mm-hmm. really stand out i think from one of the one of the younger in the younger generation is, is a really powerful one there was um, a couple kids that their mom was involved in actions of compassion and and the the boys started to hear about it and they were going to church on sunday and they went to church on Sunday, and they called me, and I didn't know these people that that well, but they got a hold of me, and, and they said, you know, Shane, we're going to go out and do actions of compassion all day. And these are very young boys, right? And so they went out and did it all, all day, and I said, well, report back what happened and everything like that, and as I started getting feedback and stuff from them, 
other of their friends had called and asked what they were doing. And they just said, oh, we're doing this action, this compassion thing. We're out helping people and doing great things and helping spread this movement. And next thing you know, some of their friends joined up as well, too. And, and, and more of them came. And that kind of started to just take on a life of its own right there. So I found that very, um, very intriguing when you see the younger generation start to take on a movement like that as well. One great story, too, in your in your backyard, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of the guys in your backyard. Um, he, he, there was a woman that he lived next next door to in Hawaii, and he got involved in actions of compassion, and he went over, and she was a lady that just didn't have any friends and stuff, and he knew that, knew her a little bit, and asked if he could help her in any way, and he took her to the store and started hanging out with her and helping her more, and now she's left Hawaii, but she comes back every year, and now she's going to be staying at, uh, at Glenn's house with him and his girlfriend when when she comes back and oh, wow he gave a video testimonial and he said you know i got hawaii for you shane we're going to do this here and we're going to do a big mm-hmm. and that was and you know and now and he said i would have never done that if i went to join actions of compassion because i was mm-hmm. thinking about it well we're, we're broadcasting to our maui listeners so if you're here on maui and you want to get involved and help us spread the word give us a call check out the website EmpoweringNations.com, mm-hmm. and then what is it like right there on the home page? There's all the information about actions. Yeah, go compassion. to the website, check it out. There's a lot of great information on your website. All right, awesome. All right, well, Shane, thank you so much for joining us today and, mm-hmm. and telling us your story and sharing these uh, examples of actions of compassion. We're excited to go out and and do some. Any final words yes. for our listeners? Yeah, I actually, I have a final word for you two. Sure. Okay. You guys need to start doing actions of yes. compassion every day, and I want your guys' stories. Okay. So I can put them in the book, and I want to be able to tune into the show, and every now and then here, this is what we've done for action, for an action today. We'll have a, um, a, a segment of our show. Both shows. Both shows called Ron Actions Wilson. of Compassion. Yes. That's I how we'll it. be That's the teams awesome. in the world. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Shane. Have a, a great rest of your day and aloha. Yes. Thanks so much. And I really appreciate you guys having me on and have a fantastic day. All Always. right. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. All right. Now, don't go too far. When we come back, we have some properties to talk about with our Maui Sada on the streets. Yes. But I think he's going to be our Maui Sada in the studio. Yes. So don't go too far. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Maui Mortgage Minute, brought to you by Ginny Madsen of the Maui Mortgage Team. Online at MauiMortgageTeam.com. Most of us got our first bank account when we were eight years old. And as a loyal customer, we assume they will give us the best deal when we need a mortgage. But when it comes to getting a mortgage, don't go to your bank. Did you know that your bank only offers a small selection of their own mortgage products and there's often a better deal available somewhere else? At the Maui Mortgage Team, we are different. We go shopping for your mortgage amongst many banks. We get them competing for your business so you get the best deal. So remember, don't go to your bank. Finding the right home and mortgage is significant to your financial success and happiness. We can help. Visit MauiMortgageTeam.com for all of your mortgage needs. Again, that's www.MauiMortgageTeam.com. NMLS 1078414, member of Pacific Home Loans. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Hawaii, I would hire Adrian Lolly and Antilio Leonardi. Their marketing strategy is so effective that if your home doesn't sell on terms you agree to, Team Lolly will buy it. Partner with the team I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. When you're trying to find the best of the best, don't settle for an agent that's just like the rest. Pick a team that knows just what to do. From buying or selling, we work hard for you. Team Lolly, the best real estate in the islands. 227-2703. 
all know the fine details of real estate can get pretty intimidating. And I have a unique proposition for you. It's from Adrian Lally and Attilio Linardi of Team Lally. What they do is offer a no-obligation guarantee. If they haven't done their job, you're free out of the contract. But don't worry, you won't want to because Adrian and Attilio will sit down with you. Establish a price and deadline to sell your home. If that deadline passes and your home isn't sold, they'll buy your home. Check out the success story. To avoid paying on a vacant property, Justin needed to sell his home fast and for top dollar. And he went with Team Lally. They immediately went to work using their amazing marketing system and got the house sold in only two weeks for $419,000, which was $3,000 over the appraised price. So call the only agents willing to earn your business every single day. Adrian Lally, Attilio Leonardi, and their team. And that phone number is 633-8633. Again, at 633-8633. Three, three. And you can also find them online at GuaranteedSale.com. Hit me. Hit me. Welcome back. This is Adrian. And this is Attilio. And you're listening to the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the Guaranteed Sold program, or we'll buy it. If you have any questions, you can reach us at 633-8633 or on the web at TeamLally.com. And that's L A. L L Y. All right, so we want to talk about some listings coming soon. We have some coming soons, and then of course we always have the the Maui deal of the day. Mm-hmm. So uh, Brandon Force, are our you there? Maui Sada on the street. Are you I'm there? I'm not on the streets, but I'm there. Yep. Yes, we thought you were going to be our Maui Sada in the studio, but we'll <laughs> we'll take a call. <laughs> yes, I got lunch all set up for us in a little bit, but uh, as of for upcoming with me. Uh, there's a couple, actually, as you guys are probably aware, the property in Front Street that uh, the issues that were the challenge, I should say, that were that it was facing are now yep. kind of passing through. Mm-hmm. If contractors getting there to do a little final little details on it, and I imagine it'll be on the market thereafter. Uh, and that one, of course, is at least on the tax side, it's a four bedroom, 2.5 bath, uh, whopping 4,300 square feet. So, if any of our listeners want to know more about this coming soon property, you can. Give Brandon a call at our on our hotline here at six three three eight six three three. Now it's on the mountain side of the street there in Lahaina, but what's unique about this property? It's like made of concrete. This is a solid structure, mm-hmm. huge. It's huge got a home. pool behind it. Then it's got the pool house behind the pool. Uh, lots of extra parking. It still has a view of the ocean because mm-hmm. the home in the front is a single One level. One story. Yep. So. And of course, it's close to if you want to just basically bike or just walk to any of the places on Front Street. It's very yep. close for that. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so that's so Front Street. We yeah. also have uh, a new house in uh, the Maui Wani area, the Legends, that little complex area. Um, anyways, it's going to be a three bedroom, three bath, uh, kind of a nice factor about it. A lot of the times in those uh, DR homes, mm-hmm. they give you the, the rooms, but sometimes the room, in some people's opinions, seem a bit small. And in this case, it was scheduled to be a four bedroom, three bath, but they made it a three three and increased the size of each room. So it's got a nice supple feel when you're inside the house. So, like, mainland uh, size bedrooms. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Exactly. That's so a it's bonus. Uh, very, very quiet street, nice neighborhood. Uh, definitely a good house. Um, well, that one, they're just finishing up a couple, you know, just little touch-ups here, and I'm guessing within the next week and a half we'll be live on the market. So I call it a Costco bedroom because when you go Costco, like, even the Aloha shirts, they're bigger. There you go. Yeah, costco size bedrooms. <laughs> Comes with a 55-gallon drum of peanut butter. Is it a Costco price, though? Yeah, of that's, we're still exactly figuring that, but it'll be in the mid five. Okay, it's okay. a good deal. No, definitely, especially because it's very easy. You know, you're right on the outside of uh, Kahului, so if you want to head to Lahaina, right there on the main road there. If you want to go to Kihei, it's, it's very centrally located, but you don't have to go through Kahului to get to the locations you need to be. Gotcha. All so right, no. what else? Tell us more. Uh, go ahead. Tell us more. So, if you want the deal of the day. Uh, the deal of the day is a, this one is on the market, not even over a day. It just came on the market. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we kind of, I think I might have mentioned it last time, you know, sometimes the key to finding the right house is to be the first to the house and put that offer in on it. And this one is uh, in Waihe, and it's uh, the Wailipu area over there. And it's uh, a seven-bedroom, four-bathroom, and it's over 2,000 square feet. It has ocean view, and it's priced right now at 450000 Wait, did you say seven-bedroom? Seven bedrooms, and this isn't like the non, like, you won't see this on the tax form. If you put the tax information, it is on the tax, mm-hmm. it's planned, uh, has all the permits, and it is a seven-bedroom, four-bathroom. 
Is oh. it is it a teardown or fair nope. condition? No, nope, wow. not a teardown. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. So and it's priced at four fifty, and that price point is that many sized rooms and square feet and view and mountain views as well. It won't last long. Wow, that is a great price. All right, so if you're looking for somebody to help you with the Maui Maui deal. The Maui deal of the day. Deal of the day. You probably want to give Brandon a call at the number 633-8633. If you're having a time, hard time remembering that number, there's four trees in it. 633 and then 8633. There you go. Lots of threes. Lots of threes. 633-8633. All right, Brandon, are you going to highlight an area for us today before we end our show? Neighborhood Absolutely. of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. The neighborhood I, I highlighted today is called Maui Upland. Uh -huh. and if you're heading straight up the hill up Haleakala, you would go right towards Makawao. But before Makawao Town, that's where Maui Uplands is. And right now, there's currently seven homes in this area. They're priced anywhere from uh, 525000 which is for a two-bedroom, one-bath, about 1,000 square feet, up to about 980000 for a five-bedroom, four-bath, 2,800 square foot. So keep in mind, though, this, this area is highly sought after because uh, you're very close to Mokwau. You have mm -hmm. an Austin cases. You have good views, a lot cooler temperature. Uh, you don't quite have the rain that is predominant if you go further you know, east towards Haiku area, so it's still fairly dry. And, of course, uh, this particular area, you could walk to the very sought-after private school, Seabury High School. And, of course, you have shopping and dining. And, of course, it's more of a country vibe being in Mokwau. Yeah. So how many homes are available currently? Do you have that information? Right now, yeah. seven of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, and, the, and the price range for these homes, where, where does it start at? And Like I said, there's everything in between, but they start at 525000 and mm -hmm. they go up to about nine eighty. Right. What's currently active on the market. Any other real estate related topics? Because I got a community event, but is there anything else? You don't have well, a, it, an action of compassion event? Could yeah, I'm going to mention this this community event. That's my action of compassion okay. for today. Okay, well, there you go. First ever Made in Maui County Festival. All right, so we'd like to welcome you to, welcome you to join the first ever Made in Maui County Festival Friday, November 7th mm -hmm. and Saturday, November 8th. Local businesses will showcase a wide variety of products, including foods, product art, pro wait, produce. Produce. Produce art. They're going to make art out of watermelon. Jewelry, fashion, <laughs> gifts, and collectibles all in one location. There's also to be demonstrations of restaurant vendors, food trucks, and more. We hope to see you there. This is the first ever Made in Maui County Festival. It's going to be at the Maui Arts and Cultural Center at the MAC. Sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. This weekend. All right, so Maui Sada on the street. Brandon, are you going to be there? I definitely think I will. Uh, what was the times again? It's all day. Uh, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Friday, Saturday. And to get in, do you bring a can of food or anything like that or anything special or just a good smile? Just bring your money and your smile and help support the local community, the local economy here, right here on Maui. That's the way to do a, an action of compassion. Mm -hmm. Be supportive of the, of the local vendors and local businesses. Yep. All right. So we are uh, approaching the, the end of our show. Okay. So thank you for listening and thank you to our sponsors. Denise Kaehu with Hawaii Escrow and Title. Mike Davies and Jenny Madsen with the Maui Mortgage Team. If you want to get a hold of any of our sponsors, just go to teamlally.com. We also want to give a big thank you to Gary, our producer here in the studio. Choo -hoo. And make sure to tune in next week. We'll have an awesome guest talking about something that will change your life forever. This is the Team Lally Real Estate Show, home of the guaranteed sold program. If we can't sell your home at the agreed upon price and our time frame, we'll have it bought for cash. Thanks and aloha.